Good morning. I am Dorothy Wallace, the Probationer Minister here at Cobarkin Parish Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning reflections. We have the pleasure of welcoming Colin as our reader this morning and also we have for the first time Myra and George who will perform our hymn for us. I hope this finds you all well and in good spirits. Our call to worship this morning is from Acts, based, based on Acts at chapter 17. We gather together in the presence of God, the Lord of heaven and earth, the creator of our world and everything in it, the one who gives us life and breath, the one who is never far away from any of us, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. So let us worship God together. Today we are thinking of the eternal presence of the Lord, who's with us constantly in the Holy Spirit, uniting us all, even though we may be apart physically. And I'm delighted to introduce Myra and George, who will sing our hymn, Be Still. And that will be followed immediately by Colin, who will read this morning's scripture, which comes from St John's Gospel, at chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Today's reading is from John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left alone. I will come back to you. In a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me, and because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am, I am in you. 
Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Myra and George, and thank you, Colin. I love preparing a sermon or a reflection. I love looking at the differences between all the different versions of the Bible, from the beautifully crafted language of the traditional King James version to the more modern and perhaps easier to follow language found in the message paraphrase. And I love looking at commentaries, Bible, biblical encyclopedias and dictionaries, all the tools of the trade of a preacher. I also love a good murder mystery. Nothing too gory, I'm more of a Miss Marple than a Jack Reacher fan. I would suppose that Inspector Morse is perhaps as gritty as I go. But I often think that looking at scripture is also a bit like being a detective at times. Looking at the different translations, at different experts' opinions on what they mean, at what different translations of words mean, and how this can change the whole meaning of that passage. Debates that have caused, alas, splits amongst Christians since the early days of the church, some which rage on to this day. One debate less controversial than some, perhaps, involves the use of a word found in this morning's reading at verse 16. The Greek word parakletos, or paraclete, which translates as called to aid. When Jesus promises his disciples that when he is no longer among them, God will send another helper, another paraclete, another counsellor advocate, or the word that I prefer out of all of them, found in the King James Version, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. It tells us that the Holy Spirit, the comforter, is there to do just that, to comfort. And it does comfort. I take great comfort in knowing that I am never alone, but always, as our hymn this morning said, in the presence of our Lord. Many of you, like me, perhaps also take comfort in the words of the poem Footprints in the Sand. The authorship of this poem is hotly, as hotly contested as many Christian debates and doctrines, and there are a number of slightly different versions. I'm going to read from a version accredited to Mary Stevenson. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there was only one. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there has only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, The years when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. This poem is often found in inspirational postcards, often on wall pla plaques, or the modern day equivalent, Facebook and Instagram posts. And just because it is often used, for me anyway, does not mean it is overused, or even worse, trite. The feeling we get when we are at our lowest, when we really need comfort, help, 
an advocate. That feeling there is someone on our side, someone who never lets us down, someone who will always be with us, always helping, always comforting. Someone who prevents us from being, as Jesus described, as orphans, that we are always surrounded by the Father. Long after the incarnate Christ has been crucified, risen and ascended, we are not abandoned. This is by no means the only purpose of the Holy Spirit, important though it is. The theologian and author Craig Coster writes that the Holy Spirit is hugely important in our very believing, in our faith. He uses the analogy of falling in love. When we fall in love, it is not abstract. We fall in love as a result of a meeting, of an encounter with our loved one. And so it is in our faith and love of Christ. We encounter the Lord and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit brings the Father and the Son to us. The Holy Spirit makes their presence known. As such, unites us with the Father. We sometimes, maybe too often, neglect the Holy Spirit. Even in art, there are many depictions of Christ, even the Father. But the Holy Spirit is somewhat more of an enigma maybe even perceived to be of less importance. But all three persons of the Trinity, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, are of equal importance. While one God, they each have roles to play, the Creator, the Redeemer and the Comforter. So in these difficult times, as our forefathers have done in the past, during plagues and war and famine, we can draw closer to God and take comfort in the helper, the advocate. Take comfort in the paraclete. Take comfort in the comforter. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Stephen now, who will lead us this morning in prayer. Well, thank you, Dorothy, for sharing and to everyone for sharing in this morning's reflections we come now before God with our prayers let us pray ever living and always present God we give you thanks for the joy that comes when we worship together we thank you for the family of faith united in our desire to follow Jesus thank you for the experience of this week for those with whom we have laughed, who have made this world a more cheery place. Thank you for those with whom we have wept and shared our sorrows in our times of need. We bless you for those who have journeyed with us, sharing together in a common task, whose support has made our time and our work easier. We thank you for all who have shared our dreams and pursued our visions, partners in a common purpose, working to an agreed goal. We thank you for the church, and we pray this morning for the Reverend Martin Fair, the new moderator of the Church of Scotland. At this strange and challenging time, bless his work and his family. Lord, in this time of lockdown, some of us have found this period to be hard and difficult. Some have found and are finding it to be frustrating and challenging. Forgive us for everything that has interrupted the companionship we should enjoy, for selfishness that has made us want nothing but our own way, for intolerance which made us see nothing but our own point of view. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us for arguments in which we have lost the place and our temper, for discussions in which bitter words and sarcastic comments were thrown about, for things we have said in the heat of the moment and now bitterly regret. Have mercy, good Lord. 
that in the days to come we will work to live in unity with one another because we are one in Christ. Hear our prayers. Lord, you promise to offer respite for the weary, to pick up those who have fallen and raise up those who are brought low. We pray for all who are bowed down under the burdens they must carry. We think of political leaders and the decisions they have to make. We pray for those who are crushed by their responsibilities at work and those who feel the pain of our world. We think of frontline workers in hospitals, care homes and hospice, for all who work in social care in the community, for funeral directors and crematorium staff, for council workers, for those who work in supermarkets and other areas where they have regular contact with others. Help them to keep on keeping on. Bring supportive friends alongside them. Give them fresh vision and courage and signs of encouragement. We pray for strangers in a foreign land, for asylum seekers and refugees separated by language and culture from familiar ways and much-loved customs. We remember the ongoing work of Christian aid and all agencies working with the poorest and most vulnerable in our world. We pray for all who are fearful for the days that lie ahead, who are confused by a world that seems less secure and more frightening than before. We pray that your presence and your spirit would comfort and guide. We bring our loneliness to God. Lord, bless those who are lonely, those who have grown old and whom the passing years have taken their friends and contemporaries. Bless each one of us as we miss seeing loved ones, grandchildren, children, parents and grandparents, friends, those who are missing physical contact with others. We bring our sorrows and worries to God, who has promised to bind up the brokenhearted and comfort all who mourn. Bless all whose hearts are sore today. Be very close to those whose family circle has been invaded and whose joy has been darkened by death. We remember all who have lost loved ones, for whom they have cared, whose needs they have met, whose lives have been so intertwined that they still listen for a voice they will not hear again. Comfort all who mourn, we pray. Thank you for our faith that sustains us, and help us to turn to you, O Lord, in trust and in hope, and to recommit our way and ourselves to you. So send us from this time with the joy that no one can take from us, the life which is your life, and the hope that gives strength to our actions. Help us to find strength to go on, to trust in Jesus who lived among us, who died for us and rose again for us, and who prays for each one of us today, even as we pray to him. Now I invite you to pray with me the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We hope you enjoyed being with us this week. Until next time, God bless, take care and stay safe.